What is dysautonomia? And why should I care? I have the answers, at least some of them. You see, probably the biggest problem with dysautonomia is that doctors are not educated on it. People, everyday people, have not even heard the word dysautonomia unless they have it themselves or have met someone who has it. And that's a big problem considering how horrible this disability is. It takes five years on average to get a diagnosis. Five years. And that's not because people aren't looking for an answer to their problems or to their medical issues. It's that doctors, like I said, doctors aren't educated on it, so they don't know. And the majority of people who are eventually diagnosed with dysautonomia have, at one point or another, been told that they are mentally ill. (laughs) And for a lot of us, that might be true, considering when you're in physical pain all the time and people are constantly telling you you're crazy, you eventually start to believe it. Dysautonomia is an invisible illness, which means you can't look at someone and tell that they are sick. If you look at me, I mean, I look pretty bad right now, but (laughs) you wouldn't be able to look at me and tell that I have a disability. Most of the time, you wouldn't. The autonomic nervous system is not something that people think about unless you have dysautonomia. Why? Because the the autonomic nervous system is a system in your body that takes care of everything that you don't have to think about if you're a healthy person. Which is why people don't think about it, because you shouldn't have to. There are about 15 types of dysautonomia, and dysautonomia affects an estimated 70 million people worldwide. And that's diagnosed. We don't know how many people are undiagnosed, considering how excruciatingly awful it is to actually find a doctor who will listen and not refer you to a psychiatrist. At one point, I was on about seven different psychiatric meds. (laughs) Not good. You can think of our bodies as being a computer. If something isn't right in a computer, it's not working, then that area of the computer is not working. And when one thing isn't working, usually it'll set up a whole different array of problems. And you can compare that to how the autonomic nervous system functions. The autonomic nervous system is the part of our nervous system that governs unconscious automatic functions such as digestion, breathing, heart rate, sexual arousal, and sleep. If you have dysautonomia, you have to think about these things at all times. You're kind of forced to think about them at all times, considering calm symptoms include an ability to stay upright, dizziness, vertigo, and fainting, fast, slow, or irregular heartbeat, chest pain, low blood pressure, problems with the gastrointestinal system, nausea, disturbance in the visual field, weakness, breathing difficulties, mood swings, anxiety, fatigue, and intolerance to exercise, migraines, tremors, disrupted sleep patterns, frequent urination, Temperature regulation problems, concentration and memory problems, poor appetite, overactive senses, especially when exposed to noise and light. This is my life, guys. I feel like most people would think that if you look at someone with dysautonomia and you don't know what dysautonomia is, you're not educated on it, you would just think that that person was lazy and wanted attention and that they just were a weak person and can't handle pain. I, however, believe that people with dysautonomia are some of the toughest people we have on this earth. I'm going to put a link in the description to a video that I saw today of a woman having a dysautonomia attack, um, which is, (laughs) it was, I, it's disturbing, so be careful if anyone is easily disturbed, because it is disturbing But it is what I deal with. And it's just easier for people to see it instead of picturing it. Because it's not something you can imagine unless you see it firsthand. Because you don't think about these things happening to somebody you know. You know. Dysautonomia is not the result of somebody being out of shape. Physically, it's not the result of someone not taking care of themselves. It's just the result of your body saying, 
I'm going to stop taking care of you. You're on your own now. I used to be a dancer. From the time I was three to the time I was sixth grade, I was a dancer. And I would say around sixth grade is when I started having symptoms and I started going to doctors. Um, And it just progressively got worse to the point where I wasn't able to walk or do anything. Even things like getting up to go to the bathroom were dangerous, actually, because I was passing out so much. On the worst days that I had, if I lifted my head off of my pillow, I would pass out. I was not in school most of my teenage life. I was at home um, because I wasn't able to go to school and I missed out on so many things because of it. And I firmly believe that if doctors had caught it early enough, I would have had a better life leading up to this point. My life is not over, so I'm still hopeful for the future, but it's it's been hell. I just, like, look at the people around me who, like, can walk and not have to worry about it, and they just, they just get up and walk. I want to go do this, so I'm just going to get up and I'm going to go walk. I'm not even thinking about how lucky it is that they're able to walk, and no... I'm not hating on those people because I was like that. It's like you don't think about how lucky you are to have those things until you don't. Um, The people, a lot of people, most most teenagers, you're supposed to be like worrying about the boy that you like or something. I thought I was dying. Because those days when I couldn't lift my head off the pillow without passing out, the doctors still didn't know what was going on and they didn't care. Because once you go to the doctor a certain amount of times saying, help me, help me, help me, please, you start to look like an attention seeker. So a lot of people with dysautonomia just stop going to doctors. Because once you're told that you're crazy a certain amount of times, you begin to believe it. And once you believe that you're crazy, you stop looking for help because it must be all in here right if I'm crazy why should I go to the doctor I'd that, I'd be stupid to be asking for medical help because I'm just crazy that's why I just need to go see my therapist that'll fix everything <laughs> there are about 15 types of dysautonomia which further complicates diagnosis I think probably the main problem with diagnosing dysautonomia is that doctors are not educated on it One in 100 teenagers has dysautonomia, and that's diagnosed. We don't know how many people are undiagnosed and living with this every day and suffering. You don't see us suffering because we're at home in bed. (laughs) That's where most of us are. I'm, I'm lucky that I have my doctor because, for one thing, it's validating to hear, no, you're not crazy, you have a medical issue. After all of these years of believing, I was crazy. You would think that how, with the degree of how disabling this illness can be, that people would, like, pay attention and doctors would do something, but no. There are three places in the entire United States. Let that sink in. We have 50 states, okay? And now think about how many cities there are in each of those 50 states only three of those cities in the entire united states have the equipment that is able to diagnose dysautonomia if you go to your family practitioner and you tell them these symptoms what they're going to do is they're going to attack the symptoms not attack they're going to try to treat the symptoms category by category you're having digestive issues let me send you to a gastrointestinal person but that's not how it works because it's your whole body and just treating one thing is not going to help I feel like one day Hopefully the generation after me, this is not going to be such a problem that people aren't listening. I 
something I've thought about a lot is how many suicides could have been prevented just by educating our doctors and educating the public. How many people would we have still here? I say that because because of this illness, because no one was able to diagnose me, I spent so many years of my life just like contemplating if I should kill myself or not. Because it's not living when you're that sick. When you're so sick that you can't lift your head this far off your pillow without passing out. And you're told that you're crazy and that's why it's happening. You're told that you're lazy and that's why that's happening. You're told that you just need to sleep better. You just need to eat better. You just need to get off your phone. You just need to work harder in school. You're told that's all you need to do. And that's why it's happening and it's it's your fault. Of course you're going to be suicidal. Would you go up to somebody with a well-known illness and tell them, you know, you do this to yourself. You're just like this because you're mentally ill. Go see your psychiatrist and you'll be fine. That's insane. <laughs> My life is starting to look up now because I got a diagnosis. Getting a diagnosis for many, many people with dysautonomia is like a breath of fresh air. It's like being heard. It's like your pain validated. It's like, it's not my fault. It relieves some of the guilt also. Not all of the guilt, but at least some of it. And I find it ridiculous that I even feel guilty in the first place because I shouldn't have to. <laughs> but I do. I have a video explaining some of the things that help me manage my symptoms. They they don't disappear once you start doing them. I have an appointment um, January 15th with Stanford, which is, I happen to be very blessed to be that close to um, a dysautonomia like, specialist. Because there are specialists that specialize in dysautonomia, but there's only three places in the whole United States. And I'm super lucky to live that close to one. January 15th, it's coming up. I got diagnosed in August, and I had to wait that long. Most people have to wait a minimum of six months to a year to get into a doctor. Meanwhile, they're bedridden. I, I'm still sick. I still have the bad days. I still have the POTS attacks and the POTS is a form of dysautonomia, which is what I have. Um, I still have all of it, but just like knowing why helps me know what I can do about it. And at least I know that I'm not dying anymore. Um, if you know someone who is sick and don't, nobody knows why, maybe show them this video. Um... 80% of POTS patients, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is a form of dysautonomia, there's 15 types, keep in mind, are teenage girls. Which is probably another reason why it's so hard to diagnose, because there's a stereotype that teenage girls are wimps and attention seekers and dramatic. I have been told that I'm attention seeking, and most other people with this have. Um... But you're not alone. Don't stop looking for a diagnosis. Don't. Just find a doctor who knows about dysautonomia. And I promise you, if you find a doctor that understands, it will change your life. My doctor recognized that I had dysautonomia with one appointment. In the first 15 minutes of seeing him, he knew what was going on. At least had an idea. We're looking for the specifics now at um, Stanford, but he knows, he knew that I had dysautonomia after 15 minutes, after years, let's see, six years of looking, one appointment is what it took. Isn't that crazy? Imagine if every doctor knew about it. I took a long time to make this video because it's hard to talk about and I don't know how to talk about it. This is going to be how I start. I will put a few links in the description if you want to learn more, and I 
we'll definitely post a link to that woman's episode just so you can get an idea of how debilitating it is for a lot of people and a lot like very often I don't know what I'm talking about I'm having brain problems now um I'm gonna go <laughs> the sun's bothering me I love you guys so much you you guys your guys support means the world to me I know I don't have many subscribers but the ones that I do have and the people who who watch every video you guys are what keep me going Special shout out to Sierra. You comment on like almost every single one of my videos and it, ma it makes me so happy. Thank you. <laughs> Bye guys.